for like fighting colds and making sure that you the gingers. Everyone always says the ginger. Keep your immune system healthy. Yeah, everyone always says gingers. And turmeric too. Turmeric as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, what is our topic today? <laughs> Haters gonna hate, hate, hate. That, that's the topic. Ah, the topic. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, good yeah, day. that's right. That's right. <laughs> Welcome. <for> us. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, Explorers. We're so yes. excited to be here, to be chatting with each other and with you about this topic. Yes. It's and a big one. You'll see we have a new guest, uh, a new resident, really. That's right. Yeah. We, we should name we should name I know. this guy. But, uh, we should. Yeah. We'll come up with something. If you guys have any suggestions for our friendly uh, cat palm, yes. then uh, let us know. We would uh, we'd love to give it a name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're fun plants. I really, yeah. I really enjoy having plants. Yeah. And plants are not haters. That's true. Yeah, plants keep their opinions to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so hater is a term, I think, that sort of made its way into our vernacular relatively recently. Yeah. I mean, I don't really remember it being around when we were growing up at all. Um, and definitely, you know, the Taylor Swift song that reached uh, great popularity <laughs> a couple years ago. Um, yeah. Where she has that catchy, you know, hey, which presumably hey, was hey, hey, um, hey. presumably was triggered by you know her own experiences. I think you're right. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. more the more public your persona is, the more likely you are to encounter this. Exactly. But the reality is, even for people who don't you know publicize themselves, you still run into haters. They're, of course. They're sort of you know. Right. They're, they're everywhere. Everywhere. And, and they're not necessarily discriminating in who they target. Exactly. So what's a hater? Uh, somebody who's rude, somebody who loves doling out criticism, someone who loves posting negative comments mm. on your social media, um, send you mean emails, um, people who just are really negative and nasty. Um, so unfortunately, you know, there are people like this who exist. You can see them in the form of internet trolls. And I think cyberbullying is its own sort of beast. Yeah, it's almost like a subsection of this. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, luckily, like, when we were growing up, we didn't have to deal with, like, social media. And, uh, and it wasn't even that long ago that we were in high school. And even online forums were relatively limited until, you know, around college, I would say. Yeah. I think you're right. And so... But why is that relevant? Why, why does it matter if they're online versus, I mean, are haters exclusively online? Or? No, I think they're both. But right. I think the magnitude of a, a hateful comment that you get in writing uh, that sort of lingers yeah. is stronger than having someone say it to your face. Mm. Maybe that's just me. Um, but I've also done research on this, and it looks like uh, it's one thing to have bullies in school, and it's another thing to be bullied you know in cyberspace where right. they're internet bullies and people and th these could be people that you know but think about it if somebody insults you to your face they have to first like muster the courage to do that yeah and yeah, to yeah. face you head on and to be you know in your face in your space and say something or do mm. something whereas you know hiding behind a masked persona which is often what we might see online, like in social media, um, is and very it, different. And it doesn't even have to be a mask persona, right? Like True. I'm just I'm just thinking True. about um, you see this even driving. I find that when <laughs> someone gets into a car and behind the wheel, um, they become this completely different person. And people who are perfectly pleasant and reasonable uh, when they're interacting with you as a person, as soon as they get behind the wheel. And they're interacting with you on the road. They're aggressive, you know. They uh, they become uh, well. There's road rage. There's right? road there's rage. That term. But my point is, what what they have, the difference is that there's a separation. Mm. Um, you can still see their faces, but you have a car, two cars between you, and some space, and you're going at high speeds. So there's this like, I can do whatever I want to you, 
and you can never get back at me because mm. of this distance right. between us. I see what you're saying. Right? That's interesting. So it's not just this anonymity. It's, uh, I'm surprised I got that right. Uh, it's not this, yeah, it's anonymity? not just that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's also the, uh, it's the sort of this barrier that's, that's between you, this protection. Right. That's right? interesting. And with the internet, you have that where uh, you might know who I am. But if I'm, you know, sending you a message from halfway across the world, chances are you're not going to get in a plane, right. <laughs> come over to me and, you know, uh, duke it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Well, that's true. I, I think you're absolutely right about that. Perceived distance or actual distance. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, I think the anonymity is definitely important in uh, sort of like understanding what's going through their heads uh, when they write something negative to you on your like Facebook page. I don't know. Um it's because they're hiding behind, you know, their anonymous persona or just a pseudonym that they have mm. so that you'll never be able to know. This could be like your neighbor. This could be your friend. No, it wouldn't be a friend. It would be a frenemy. Ooh. Right. Oh. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think the that sort of like makes it its own beast when it's online as opposed to offline, like in, yeah. in real life. And it certainly facilitates it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's yeah. a big part of it is just that because of the dynamics of online personalities, uh, online exposure, yeah. so it's much easier to be public. Even if you know you're you're um, don't have a an explicit following, um, the, just having an online venue means that a comment you make in a forum, uh, even if you don't have an explicit following, can still be viewed by hundreds of thousands, even millions of people. Right. And garner responses. Exactly. So you, your exposure is much greater. Mm -hmm. The population is much greater. Yes. Right. right. And so, um, therefore, the combination of those ingredients yeah. means there's going to be some more, more right. hate activity, hate right. activity. Right. And that's it's too bad. Um, but I think it happens to really anyone who puts themselves out there, um, especially if you are, you know trying to create something and put it out in the world. And um, it could even be, you know, a social media post that, you know, you might want to share something about your life or you want to share something about your travel experience. But it could also be in the form of content creation for, like, educational purposes or maybe vlogging or something like that yeah. where the person is actually, you know, putting themselves out there. And, and, and I think we have to respect that, right? But of course, I don't think there's any um, negotiating with haters. I think they'll just keep on doing, like Taylor Swift says, haters going to hate, 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 hate. So it's up to us, um, presuming that you're a non-hater, I would hope, right, that we don't, we don't engage in that kind of behavior mm. um, and really even pay any mind to it. Well, yeah, I was going to say, um, we obviously can't control the number of haters and what the haters do. Right. Um, but you can, of course, control how you interact with the haters. Exactly. And, and how you bear the brunt of their uh, animosity. Exactly. Yeah. So I think with somebody who you know is a rude person in real life, you can, you know, take measures to avoid them, to minimize your interactions with them. If it's somebody that you've run into constantly, maybe that you're there at your coffee shop, maybe that you're there at your school or at your workplace. Mm you can still minimize the time that you spend with them. But when it's online, you don't really, you don't know where these people live. You don't have control over um, distancing yourself from them, except for not engaging, right? And I, and I think that um, that's, that's a big one, depending on the nature of the comment, um, where on the spectrum it falls, right? Right. From most, like, intense, um, to maybe just, you know, kind of like a rude thing. Yeah, engaging them is always sort of this tricky thing. Yeah. Because on the one hand, um, and I've seen it go both ways, right? So um, there's this one um, coding instructor that I really like on Udemy. And Maximilian is his name. And he puts out really high quality content. Uh, That's a great name, Maximilian. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's Maximilian. It's something like that. I like that. He's a German fellow. <laughs> That's funny. And he's, he's, he's great. He's really good at what he does. And all, all of a sudden, on one of the, uh, one of the lessons, yeah. um, out of the blue, 
uh, this guy comes on and just starts aggressively attacking, you know, the, his style of coding, Ugh. his credentials, his teaching, all this, style. his teaching Ugh. stuff. And so Maximilian responds and he's wow. like, and he responds very, in a very sort of mature way. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I'm sorry that you feel this way. I'd love to understand a little more about why it is you, you're so disappointed, like what's frustrating you. Help me understand and, mm -hmm. and let's see if we can fix this. Right. And the guy was completely unreasonable. Just like didn't make any sense whatsoever. Just continued this like personal rant. assault yeah. rant. Yeah. Um, was making no sense. And 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 Max was trying to sort of um, trying to uh, you know make good by this guy, but it became quickly apparent that uh, there was no reasoning with him. No, that's too bad, man. Yeah. Um, and so the reason I bring up this anecdote is because um, I, I am in favor of, you know, if someone has an issue, mm -hmm. trying to talk it out and, and, and sort of get to the bottom of it and mm -hmm. see if we can fix it. Uh, but when it comes to some of these online trolls. And right, that's it, the thing. There's, there's, no, there's no deal. It's like terrorists, yeah, right? Yeah. There's no negotiating. Well, and, and, and you know, um, like you'll see it also on a Google review. So if you're trying to figure out like what restaurant to go to, what, I don't know, gym to be... Um, uh, to to subscribe to where, wherever you are, um, you can check out the comments. And sometimes people just say the meanest things. And then sometimes the owner or the manager will chime in and say, "Sorry, you feel that way. Right. How can totally. I, you know, thank you for your feedback." Um, but sometimes there's like no real response that you can give because it's just like hate, 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 right. or blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. And like, what are you supposed to, it's not a force to be reckoned with. Like, what are you going to say? Yeah. You're just going to instigate them. You're just going to instigate them further. And in that case, I think probably what's most effective mm -hmm. is simply saying something to the effect of, uh, I'm sorry that, f I'm sorry you feel that way, right? Like, yeah. the, I think the response is sometimes helpful just because you acknowledge shows, them. You acknowledge, you That's acknowledge, fair. you and it's more so for the public. The, the hater doesn't need to be acknowledged, right? Right. The, the, the hater is just going to hate. Um, but gonna if, it's, hate. If, this, if this altercation is taking place publicly, yes. it's sometimes good to step in and be the reasonable voice and not try and defend yourself because defending yourself, you get pulled into this long sort of public altercation that uh, you know doesn't make anyone look good. Right, or an ego trip. Ego trip. Most people, when you're reading when they're reading reviews, if they see that there's this weird person, they know they're weird. And so you just respond and say, hey, look, I'm sorry you feel that way. And not weird in yeah. a good way, because there's good kind of weird yeah. and there's like not good kind right, of Right, right. Um, hey, no, you know, there like... are other breeder shops, get your breeder elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what's interesting is you're mentioning that creators are most, most susceptible to, to this behavior. And I totally agree. Yeah. Restaurants are a form of creation, right? That's so, true, true. Um, those, Anyone who's sort of putting themselves adding out to the there. world, yeah. yeah, exactly, and trying and, to make a meaningful contribution, yeah. big or small, right, to society, to your neighborhood, to the internet, to yeah. your school, wherever, yeah. right? The, yeah, it's the people who are making the world uh, um, such an interesting and wonderful place that are most susceptible. Mm -hmm. um, and so, anyways, yeah, I think. Um, Figuring out the right sort of balance of engagement is important, yeah. right? Um, generally speaking, you're not going to be able to reason with them. That's true. Um, but at acknowledging them uh, just for the, the sake of showing the public the other that people on you're there. around, yeah. that you, you see this person and, and you know. And then, but importantly, also engaging with the positive comments to show that exactly. you, you, know, you that, are a reasonable person yeah. and uh, this person. And that you appreciate they're taking the time to read, to watch, to listen to your content and, and you know, engage with it in a meaningful, yeah. positive way. The other way I think people can also engage with people if they have to, um, again, depending on the nature of the content and the comment, excuse me, um, is to made a, sort of make light of it hmm. and to maybe add some humor to it. And it could be self-deprecating. It could be, and again, it's not for the the hater themselves for that comment specifically. It's right. for the other people. And oftentimes um, what happens, I've, I've seen um, you know, research supporting this as well, where people who engage with it in sort of a making light kind of way will 
garner the affections of the people right. in that sort of um, community, let's say, around that video yeah. or post or blog, and sort of like fend, defend the person who, the creator themselves. Totally. Right? And just like excoriate the person who wrote that <laughs> comment to begin with. And it, it starts to bring engagement about. And for the creators out there, engagement is really important, regardless of what whatever platform you're on, the one that you own, the one that you're, you know, renting, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and so it's really important. Engagement is something that we really like. <laughs> Hopefully it's good engagement. Right. But it's really interesting how that they can like turn the tables on, totally, on yeah. people. Totally, yeah. I've seen that done. Um, yeah. Ramit Sethi. Okay. Ramit Sethi is actually very good about that. And he'll occasionally... Uh, good old Ramit. Good old Ramit. <laughs> uh, he's like one of the master marketer type guys. Um, he wrote... He started his, his foray into this whole world... That he's in now is um, I will teach you to be rich. Yeah, that book. exactly. Yeah. Which he he wrote I think like the first draft in university, um, and then continued to iterate on it. But really fascinating guy. Um, I like a lot of his content, um, and the uh, he he would occasionally sort of highlight his experiences with these haters, <laughs> um, and his responses are always hilarious. Really? But I will say yeah. that they're funny, but some of them, it still comes off as a bit defensive. Yeah, of course. And uh, as soon as you become defensive, you're acknowledging the validity yeah. of the comment. So it's one thing to acknowledge the existence of the comment. Right. There's no, there's no sort of uh, avoiding that. It's there, it's public, and in most cases, it doesn't get deleted. Right? So it's there. And there's one thing to acknowledge it. But once you start defending yourself against it, then you're even, you're establishing this idea that what they're saying is reasonable. Yeah. Or true. Or true. Yeah. Either way, um, by, by, by sort of um, engaging with it, you do open up uh, the, the risk yeah. of um, sort of getting pulled into yeah. that thing. So anyways, I, I do like the humor approach and I think it can be effective. Right. Um, I would just say use it with caution. I agree with that 100%. And it's not um, for everyone. Yeah, that's the other thing. And it doesn't yeah. necessarily uh, reflect your personality. Some people are really good at just like witty comebacks that aren't mean. They're just, you know, pointing tr truth um, out about the other person. And they're really good about it. It's just like so natural. I can think of so many people that I know that, yeah. right? Um, but not everyone's like that. And if you're the person who like a comeback will come to, Something to say to that person, like weeks later, <laughs> this might not be for you. Might not be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, there was uh, there was another point you made that I think was really astute, which is, okay. and I think you made this in the video, which I liked, um, was the fact that uh, these people are taking the time to uh, comment on your on your uh, creation in most cases, right? Right. Exactly. And when I say creation, I, I use it loosely. Like it literally could just be a comment to a comment you made in a forum, right? Exactly. It's still a creation. You're still adding you something. You put something out you put there. Something out there. Yeah. So, um, and I think that's right. You're, you're acknowledging, they, by them engaging with whatever you put out there, it means that at the very least, uh, they saw it and responded to it. And they thought about it. And they thought about it. Yeah. Which is why I think uh, a perfectly appropriate reaction uh, is a response is just to say, thanks for your, in th thanks, not, I wouldn't even say insight, but like, Thanks for your opinion. Yeah. You know? I've also seen creators say, thanks for taking the time to write this. Exactly. You know what That's I mean? It. Just like acknowledging yeah. the fact that they spent time on it and that yeah. you were on their mind for And there's nothing to that say time. to that. Like you, exactly. can, you, you can't attack that, right? right. It's just... Well, I'm sure people could find ways. You could try. I yeah, mean, but at the point is it, it comes... The, it's, it's a very powerful response because it says, thank you. Like you're clearly taking the higher ground. Right. And... Um, and it's acknowledging their existence. Yeah. Which is sometimes all these people want. It's true. A lot of the time. Maybe they want attention. Yeah, a lot of the time these are just very lonely people yeah. who, um, you know, are just looking for a way to be heard. Right. And they don't necessarily know how to approach someone. And they may not know how to do right. it. Um, they may ha be only familiar with this style, right? Um, but they, can, they, they know that if they attack someone, they're likely to get a response. Right. Much more so than if they just say something neutral. Right. So they're sort of trained. That's interesting. Psychologically trained to attack in order to get a response. And mm -hmm. even though that's an empty form of interaction, it's yeah. still interaction. That's true. 
right? Yeah, so I think, excuse me, looking at it from that perspective really helps us understand sort of maybe like the psychology behind it. And I think I really like what you're saying about showing gratitude mm. for not only that comment, but that you don't feel that way, right? That you're not looking at life with, you know, from a glass half empty approach. Um, you're sort of able to distance yourself from that. Otherwise, I don't think you'd be able to create the things that you do, right? Um, sure, everyone has, you know, off days and whatnot, but it's yeah. one thing to have a few of those or just like really be stuck in that sort of like, you know, space, the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that's interesting. But you know, every I think I think all celebrities, influencers, uh, uh, content creators, um, all of those kinds of people who, when they reach a certain level, they also attract, well, not, they, they don't necessarily attract them, but because of the volume of their, yeah. like, subscriber count, population, following, tribe, however you want to say it, they also, they include everyone, right? They're just, like, think about all the people that are now flocking to that space, um, you're going to get some good apples and some not so good apples. So Yeah. Yeah, Tim Ferriss put out a really good article about um, his own experiences as he sort of grew in fame. It's such a scathing account of like what he went through. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's really intense and for anyone who's sort of aspiring to build an audience and so forth, I think it's definitely worth taking a look at. Um, I, if if you look at it, it's, it's something I, I would just search Tim Ferriss uh, and the dangers of fame or something or the downside of fame or what people don't talk about. In any event, the point simply is it, it's, in very, it's very much a law of numbers, right? So in a, in a school of, of a couple hundred people, yeah. you're likely to have one or two people who are bullies or are just difficult to be around. Yeah, I feel like every class has like a bully, Even right? every class, Even 20 every people, class, 15 people, 10 say. people, there's, there's going to be someone who's like a little off. Off. Um, now, once you start to increase it, think about like a town, you start to have crime, right? Think about a city, you start to have serious crime. Mm. Um, and then by the time you get to the size of a whole county, right? You're starting to, you're starting to talk about the same size populations that people have on YouTube, on right. Twitter, right. on Instagram. Right. So by definition, just by law of numbers, you're going to, the larger you get, you're going to attract these types of people. There's, there's no avoiding it. Yeah. Which is why uh, learning how to deal with it, I think, it's is better. such an important strategy. Yeah, trying to avoid it is futile. The, the, trying to avoid it is basically, the only way you can do that is to not create. Yeah. And that's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, it's you know? just, I mean, if you want to do really it. That really is letting them win. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, and, mm -hmm. so learning instead how to sort of cope with it mm -hmm. um, and building defense strategies against it um, mental strategies as well as uh, actual sort of interactive strategies uh, is, is a very, I think, the, the only way to, to sort of uh, be able to create in today's world. Exactly. And there's a, there's a Polish proverb that comes to mind in light of what we're discussing. Hmm. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Huh. I think I've told you this one before. Not my circus, not, not my, my circus, monkeys. Not my monkeys. So you can interpret that to mean like, this is not my problem, right? It, whatever they're going through, it has no bearing on what you've done, what you're about to do, what you're creating. Totally. It has nothing to do with you. Totally. I love that. So I, I'm starting to get it. So like I, the, the presumption or like the, the idea behind that is yeah. you're maybe in the audience of the circus yeah. and the monkeys are going crazy. Yeah. Uh, and you, you, you know, you feel bad for the performers, but yeah. at the same time you're like, look, that's, not, not my circus. Yeah, it's not my circus, not my monkeys. Not my monkeys. Uh, this isn't, you know, the issue I have to deal with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's, I think, a very good point. You could even bust that out as a response if you want. I don't know. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Let them unpack it. But that's the, yeah, it's, it, the, the point is very valid, which is um, typically when someone's acting unreasonably, yeah. um, chances are it has nothing to do with you and much more to do with um, what they're going through, what they're going through. the person they are. So it really, again, it depends on you know, the nature of the comment, um, how incendiary it was. Um, how reasonable it is. Yes. 
you know? And then sort of how you want to approach I it. I don't even necessarily have an issue with incendiary. Yeah. Because... Because um, it promotes engagement? Because it promotes engagement. <laughs> if, if it's incendiary, but it has a valid point, I'm willing to engage. Okay, right? that's I'm interesting. I'm willing to talk about okay. it. Okay. Okay. And I think this, this is a nice segue into um, another aspect of, of the video, which is that sometimes uh, the hating yeah. can be helpful. And, and um, you have yeah. to yourself decide and, and be the arbiter of what's considered hating versus just critical feedback. Exactly. You know, and, and the reality is... Very critical feedback. <laughs> even very critical <laughs> yes. feedback. The reality is sometimes... Uh, there's there's some truth in it, yeah. And and there's there's particularly when uh, sort of viewed in aggregate, if there's mm -hmm. there's a clear pattern in, in sort of what's being communicated, then maybe it's not hating. Maybe it's just good advice, right? Right, or at least right. some of it. Maybe the way that they conveyed that message was not the best way. Maybe yes. you should tell them to come over to Exploring, and we can help <laughs> finesse their message and their communication. Exactly. But um, maybe there is some validity to that. And I think that's a really good point. It's up to you to sort of, you know, parse it and figure out if there's any kernel of truth in that. Right. Um, and I think that's a really healthy way of looking at it, right? Not to take it personally, but to say, well, you know, is there any truth to this comment? Okay, yeah, let's exactly. unpack it for a second. Yeah, if like pretend you were a third party, right? Yes. Someone who's not you, someone who's not the person who made the comment. Right. You're just a sort of independent arbiter and uh, you're looking at it and you say, did that, was there any justification mm -hmm. for what was said there? Right. Right. Was there any kernel of, of, of reason in it? Yes. Yeah. And that, that yeah. And, and then it's you It's a might, helpful way. It's a helpful way. Yeah. And I think the more that you get exposed to this, um, the more you get good at sort of walking that fine line, yeah. understanding what's what and how, how you know, comments should be treated based on sort of the nature of them. Exactly. So I want to just circle back to the in-person interaction, mm -hmm. like a face-to-face -face situation mm -hmm. where someone makes an, you know, uh, an unsavory remark to your face, but it's sort of like cloaked in... A little bit of like, you have to interpret it, mm. right? What do you do in that situation? If someone says it to your face? If someone says it to your face, and again, it could be a little bit sort of nuanced, so it doesn't look like a direct uh, derogatory remark or yeah. comment. I think it depends on the context. If it's just the two of you, mm -hmm. I'm willing to talk it out, you know? Yeah. Um, Often what haters are looking for is to put on a show yeah. for a group of people. And get a rise out And get a rise. So yeah. if it's just the two of you, then I'm happy to say, that's interesting you feel that way. I'd love to better understand what made you say that and why you feel that way, right? And really get to the bottom of it. If it's, in, let's just say instead we're sort of on stage, yeah. maybe in a yeah. debate or, mm. or um, you know, some kind of public venue where we're in a dialogue, or even honestly at like a meeting in a business yeah, room, yeah, right? Right. Um, in, a, in a business context where uh, you have 30 people in the room uh, and two people are, are sort of have conflicting views on a situation. And there's tension. And you there's can tension. Feel it. That's yeah. a much tougher situation, right? Yeah. Um, I think uh, the immediacy of being face to face still justifies you trying to get to the root of it, right? Yeah. Getting that person to explain themselves. Um, because often if it's, if it's baseless accusations, they won't be able to explain themselves. Right. I mean, they're unfounded. So you can ask them to elaborate on it and they'll say, well, I actually don't know what to say. Yeah. So never mind. Exactly. <laughs> I actually retract my statement. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Says no one ever. But, uh, uh, but I think that forces them into that position, right? Yes. Um, and that's why I think going back to what we were saying at the very beginning, we see less of it face to face because you know, once you say something, you're accountable, immediately yep. accountable for it. Yeah. Uh, and everyone around you is going to be listening. So if that person challenges you back, the other people might come in. Right. They'll start and to see that defend you or just know what kind of person they are. Right. Exactly. And their true colors show. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's 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 a good point. It's, it's, it's things are very different face to face than yeah. they are online, and um, so you know knowing what what approach to take in what context uh, can really help you deal with with. 
uh, the nuances of those differences. Right. But I think the benefit of receiving something like that face-to-face, -face, be it one-on-one, -on -one, be it in a group, is that you can actually resolve the conflict. Because mm. there might be a conflict. Um, the issue might be something that you can resolve. Um, and that's much more likely to be done in a face-to-face -face setting. So there's a great video that we put out about face-to-face -face communication. And um, you can check it out. It's... it's uh, it's to encourage you to get out there and, and talk with people. It's really important, yeah. I think, for our, well, not just I think, it's research supports this, that it's important for our longevity and for our well-being and for our happiness, our social and emotional and yeah. all that. Sense of fulfillment. Yeah, and um, I, I think you're also getting at something that, that is a very good yeah. strategy, mm -hmm. which is, if someone is attacking you publicly, reaching out to them privately. Yes. And, yes. And and, yes. and sort of trying to solve the issue just between the two of you. Yep. If they're genuine in their attacks and their issues with you, um, then maybe it's something that can get solved privately. Yeah. And, and trying to solve it. If it's someone you trust and know, mm -hmm. do it in person. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. If it's someone anonymous online, Try reaching out to them, maybe send them a, a direct message and trying to suss it out, particularly if it's a repeated thing. Right. If it's like happening on every single blog post of yours or every yeah, yeah, single exactly. music video you put out. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Book you write, right? Um, see if you can sort of get to the bottom of it mm -hmm. and they might appreciate it. Yes. Um, if that doesn't work, then you know that they're just sort of out there to attack and yeah. there's not much to be done. You just sort of, you know, feel sorry for them because they're in that abyss, like I said. Not my monkeys, not my circus. Not my monkeys, not my circus. Yeah, that's my favorite phrase. Yeah, it's really today. good. Yeah. I think we have some action over there. I'm not really sure. Uh, oh, hello, Alex. <laughs> hello. Great to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know Alex, Alex Line has a phenomenal communications channel. Yes, it's really good. Um, and uh, He's yeah, over on our featured channel, so you can check it out. Yeah, yeah. Definitely uh, give it a look. Uh, we need to get you on, on the I live know. sometime, Alex. I know. We That'd definitely should. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, I think that sort of sums it up, right, in terms of what we were hoping to cover. Yeah, it's a beast of a topic. Yeah. But there are definitely ways of mitigating its effects on us, be it IRL, in real life, or on online. Um, and it just, I think with practice, <laughs> you get better at it, right? Totally. Yeah. You do. And and again, learning to sort of identify what's worth engaging with, what isn't. Yeah. And then if you are going to engage, you know, what what strategy to take there, how, what sort of form of engagement makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of the things I'll close with is that if you're if you're getting uh, uh, sort of hate mail, whatever you want to call <laughs> it, right? If you're getting that kind of attention. Chances are you're doing something right That's because really you, you, you've put yourself out there. You've started to uh, attract attention um, and that alone is an accomplishment. So yeah. you can even view it as a signal that uh, you're on the right path. Yeah. And I think it's the reality that you can't be liked by everyone, nor should you seek totally. that. Another really good point. You shouldn't aspire to it necessarily. We're all different. We're all unique. And that's the beauty of individuals, right? Um, so I think it's really important to keep that in perspective. Yeah. And, and Alex just mentioned oh. actually the same thing. He was just talking oh, about how the more he puts himself out there, yeah. the more likely uh, he is to attract that stuff. Yeah. And that's the reality. So keep at it. Keep know at that it. it's inevitable. Yeah. Um, and build up your defenses against it. Yeah, and just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Keep on yeah. keeping on. Take right? pleasure in, in what you're making. Um, and appreciate the people who appreciate it. And I think, uh, yeah, and I think you'll have enough sort of Fire to keep keep yeah. the engine rolling. I love that. All right. All right. Well, that's a wrap <laughs> on this live stream. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you in our next one, and we'll see you in the video that we put out later this week. Absolutely. All right. Yep. Happy Look forward exploring. to hearing from you, and uh, have a great weekend. Yes, and happy exploring. And happy exploring. <laughs>